In this video, I want to talk about solving equations involving power functions. And specifically, we're going to look at power functions of the form x to the m over n power. So we're only going to use uh, we're only going to use rational exponents in this situation. And also, we're going to assume that these rational exponents are written in lowest terms. So m and n have no common divisors amongst them. Now, one thing to remember here is that when you take x to the m over n, this is the same thing by exponent rules as, as the nth root of x to the m. So radicals and powers might be involved in this situation. So imagine first we're in the situation where m over n right here, where our denominator, our denominator here is an odd power. So if your denominator is odd, that means you're talking about things like the third root or the fifth root or the seventh root. These functions have no restrictions on their domains whatsoever. We, we only have to worry about the even roots. And so the domain in this situation is going to be all real numbers. And likewise, um, the range is a little bit more complicated because it has a lot to do with the numerator here. In which case you see something like the following. Uh, if the numerator if the numerator turns out to be an odd number as well, so like an example would be like three fifths, if you had something like that, then we're gonna see that our range is gonna be all real numbers and our function is gonna be always increasing. It's gonna be always increasing. On the other hand, if your numerator turns out to be an even number, because that is allowed, um, in that situation, your range would actually only be zero to infinity. Because like we saw with even monomials before, if you square a real number, it cannot be negative. And so if your numerator is, is even, that means you've essentially squared your function um, and therefore you can't get negatives. And it won't always be increasing. It'll actually be decreasing and uh, on the interval negative infinity to zero. And then it'll be increasing on the interval zero to infinity. So in that regard, this blue part, uh, the red part, it kind of looks like an even monomial. And the blue part kind of looks like an odd monomial. So if your denominator is odd, the numerator being even or odd, it'll kind of it'll look a lot like an, an, a monomial in some regard. I and mean, that's not exactly true because the concavity can be very, very different, right? So an odd monomial will look something like this, but we could get things like the following. Um, the concavity could be totally whack. We're not going to worry about that right now. Now, in the situation where x equals the exponent m over n, let's suppose that the denominator is actually an even number in that situation. Now, of course, if the denominator is even, and since the fraction's in lowest terms, that means the numerator must necessarily be odd. So there's only one situation to consider here. Um, but there is, there is an important caveat in this situation, your domain is not going to be all real numbers. Your domain is only going to be zero to infinity, right? Because if you take a negative at for x, since the since you're taking a square root, because if you have an even denominator, you're taking a square root or a fourth root or a sixth root, you have to worry about imaginary numbers. And if x is negative, you're going to take the square root of an, of an negative number, which is imaginary. So its domain, we're going to restrict it to just be zero to infinity. Otherwise, we'd have to allow for... Um, imaginary solutions, which that's possible. In terms of graphing, we're not going to allow that. But for solving algebraic equations, we're going to allow that. Well, what does it do to the range? Well, it turns out in that situation that whatever the situations you're in before, right, when you are going from zero to infinity, this function will be increasing. And so we see the same thing there. Your range will look like zero to infinity. And you'll see that this thing is always increasing. Now it could look something like this, um, but it could also look something like this. There's a couple possibilities. Now, why does, why does the graph of things matter so much as you're trying to solve these things? So it does play an important role right here. Let me switch the color. Let's look at the equation x to the 5 fourths is equal to 32. Now, one, the way to solve equations like this is going to use the following property. If you have x to the m and then you raise that to the n, that actually means you can multiply the powers together. That was one of our exponent rules. So when you want to solve an equation like x to the 5 fourths here, what you're going to do is you're going to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal exponent. So notice that we have the 5 fourths power. We're going to raise that to the 4 fifths power to try to solve this thing. Because then on the left-hand side, you're going to get x to the first, which is just x, 
five fourths times four fifths. But then this equals 32 to the four fifths, which you want to think that as the fifth root of 32 to the fourth. In which case you get that the fifth root of 32 is two. So it's two, 32 is just two to the fifth. Then you raise that to the fourth, you're going to get 16. So it looks like the solution to this equation here is going to be 16. And that is perfectly correct. There's no issue with that. And the issue that you have to kind of watch out for is the following. First of all, notice we're raising both sides to the four fifths power. Because the denominator is odd, this is going to be a one to one function. It has a true inverse. Things are going to be hunky and dory. Uh, but when we switch to say the next example, we have to watch out for things. Notice we have x to the two fifths power is equal to 64. To solve this one, we take the two fifths power and we're going to be taking the reciprocal power of both sides which the reciprocal power here is going to be five halves. Take five halves. Which on the left-hand side, the two-fifths power and the five-halves power cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, notice what we have here. We're going to have the square root of 64 raised to the fifth power. Now, because we're taking the square root, that actually means there's two solutions here. We have to have a plus or minus. And this is why I was talking about the issues about domain and range earlier, about increasing, decreasing, because this has to do with whether the function is actually invertible or not. Um, if your numerator here is an even number, then you're going to need a plus or minus with your solution, because in order to get rid of a square, you have to take a square root. Uh, but there's actually two possibilities, because an even monomial is a two to one function. And so we see here that the solutions would actually be plus or minus uh, the square root of eight. Sorry, square root of 64 is eight. So we have to take 8 to the 5th, which will be 32,768. But in particular, there's two solutions here. There's plus 32,768 and minus 32,608. These are things we have to watch out for. But another issue that we have to watch out for is the following. What if we had something like, like this? So we had x to the 2 fifths is equal to negative 64. In this situation, when we take the square root of both sides, we'll end up with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 64 to the fifth, which that actually gives us an imaginary number, right? So we get plus or minus 32,768i as your two solutions. And so you have to, whether you have a positive or negative makes a big difference here. If we want, if we want real solutions, uh-uh, uh-uh, we'd say there's no solution right here. If we're allowing complex solutions, then we'd say something like this. So when your numerator is even, some funky things happen. When the numerator is even, then, the, then you'll get two solutions for which they could be imaginary solutions. So you have to watch out for it. So treat even numerators with caution. We didn't have that issue when we did uh, odd numerators. If the denominator was even, that's no big deal whatsoever with the following exception. Um, if you had... If you took the situation where x to the 5 fourths was equal to negative 32, in this situation, you're going to get no solution going on here. Because like we talked about earlier, the range of this function is 0 to infinity. So if your denominator is even, then you, that cannot equal a negative number. Even though you might think there's a solution, there isn't one. That's outside the range of the function. So if your numerator is even, you'll have two solutions and they could be non-real solutions. If your denominator is even, then the right-hand side had better be positive, otherwise there's no solution. Um, now the thing is, if both numerator and denominator are odd, you don't have to worry about these issues. So in some respect, even numbers are the odd behaving ones. I know it's a horrible pun, but it, it's the truth. Um, let's take something like this. Let's take the equation 3 equals x to the 3 fourths is equal to x to the 1 half. Now, in this situation, we have x's on both sides of the equations. How can we deal with that? How can we get rid of, how can we get rid of the, the rational exponents here? Well, if you were trying to add something like 3 fourths plus a half, what you would probably do is like, well, I guess I need to find a common denominator, 3 fourths plus 2 fourths, and then you add those together to get 5 fourths. We want to kind of do the same thing here. We're going to take our function... 3x to the 3 fourths, and we're going to take a power on both sides, but we want to take the least common denominator, so that's going to be 4 in this situation, so I'm going to take both sides of the equation and raise it to the fourth power. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you had something like the following, if you had 3 fourths x plus um, 
seven is equal to like one half x. How could you deal with this equation? You could simplify things by kind of timesing both sides of the equation by four. This would clean up the fractions entirely. You get three x plus 28 is equal to two x. We want to kind of clear the same, we want to clear denominators for the exponents. We have to look for least common denominators here. So we take the fourth power on both sides. By exponent rules, the left-hand side would become three to the fourth. I'll switch that back to white. Three to the fourth times x cubed. And then the right-hand side would look like x squared. That's what we have here. And then we would try to simplify this thing. We get 81 x cubed is equal to x squared. How do you solve a polynomial equation like this? It turns out that the way we solved it for quadratics works the same way here. We could try to factor it. 81 x cubed minus x squared equals zero. You can factor out an x squared on the left-hand side, giving you 81 x minus one. And then by the zero product property, we must have that either x squared equals zero or 81 x minus one equals zero. Solving the first one tells you x equals plus or minus zero, which is actually the same number, zero. Solving the other one says you get one over 81. And those would be the two solutions to this equation right here. So when you have rational exponents, sometimes we try to clear the denominators. Uh, in this case, we use exponential properties as opposed to multiplying both sides by the same number.